Hello everyone, my name is Dixiano Mello. I'm going to present the work Push Recovery Strategies Through Deep Reinforcement Learning. I am advised by Professor Marcos Massimo and by Professor Adilson Cunha. We all are from Aeronautics Institute of Technology. The development of a robust biped walking engine is one of the biggest challenges in mobile robotics. Legged robots are more adapted to navigate in real environments. Unfortunately, they still lack of ability to keep the balance and resist perturbations. In order to improve uh, legged robots' locomotion, many researchers have studied what causes humanoids to fall and what could be done to avoid it. This is the ultimate goal of this work. The balance control in human beings has been described mainly by two behaviors, ankle and hip strategies. Those human behaviors are the inspiration of our approach. Deep reinforcement learning has demonstrated success in continual control problems. Has and others achieved robust locomotion behaviors that perform well across a suite of tasks. On the other hand, OpenNI created a system that was able to learn humanoid hand detectory from scratch in a real robot. This picture summarizes the current work. The problem that we address is trying to implement a push recovery controller to improve a bipedal walking engine. Given the success of deep reinforcement learning techniques and continuous control problems, this approach was adopted. Okay, first of all, let's understand deeply the human behaviors which inspire this work. Push recovery strategies can be, des can be described as particular multiple muscle synergies or strategies used to respond to postural perturbations. Those movements have been studied by physiologists for decades and are the target of many works which aim to improve humanoid robot locomotion. As you can see in figure number two, with ankle strategy, the balance is restored using torques generated at the ankle joint, and there is no bending in the hip. The core idea is to move the center of pressure in order to change the tangential ground reaction force, increasing the horizontal component Fx. As consequence, the motion of the center of mass is affected and therefore the balance is recovered, as illustrated in figure number 3. As you can see now in figure number 4, with hip strategy, balance is restored by the component use of ankle torque and by bending the hip. The upper body rotates forward and downward, which generates a backward rotation on the lower body. The outcome is a higher angular acceleration of the body, restoring the balance. As the location of the center of pressure is limited by under the feet, the ankle strategy is used first with small perturbations. The second strategy, hip strategy, is, is responsible by creating a moment about the center of mass, which generates a larger tangential ground reaction force. This leads to a new point, which is called centroidal moment pivot, CMP. For a non-zero centroidal moment, the CMP may move beyond the edge of the superfoot, generating a larger horizontal component of the tangential ground reaction force, as can be seen in figure number five. Our next topic is a literature review. The first three works implement proportional and bang-bang controllers. Classical reinforcement learning is used to optimize parameters of such controllers. The fourth work, on the other hand, implements PD and bang-bang controllers. In this case, the switch between strategies is performed by a deep key network. Notice that those four works apply a reward signal related to the residual stopping energy, as can be seen in the last column. The fifth and sixth works are much more similar to ours. In those works, the low-level controllers are represented by narrow networks, which are trained by deep reinforcement learning algorithms. The reward signal is represented by a sum of multiple objectives. Each one is defined such that the individual parameters are attracted to their target values. 
while degrading exponentially as getting further. In contrast with other works, the Hayward signal used in our work is much more agnostic, in a way that the learning agent was not aware of physical constraints related to the problem. The reward signal chosen is related to how many time steps the agent was able to survive. If the agent falls, the episode is over. It is called early termination. In other words, the longer the agent keeps its balance, the best. It explicitly reinforces the agent to keep going forward as long as possible, accumulating reward. Let's now describe our methodology. The environment for this work is the RoboCup 3D Soccer Simulation League, shown in figure number 6. As mentioned before, we apply the proximal policy optimization algorithm. Specifically, we use the OpenAI baselines uh, implementation of BPO. OpenAI baselines is a set of right quality implementations of reinforcement learning algorithms. For this work, in order to speed up the training processes, we use a cluster called Intel AI Dev Cloud. Our observation space or state space is composed by 39 elements. The features that compose our state space are shown in table number two. In synthesis, the state space is composed by torsos, angular velocity and acceleration, by the foot pressure sensor data, by the joint positions, and finally by the height of the center of mass. A question number one describes the final action. Y hat is the raw output of the neural network, which is clipped from minus one to one. We map the value y hat from the range minus one to one to the range of each joint, which is represented by table number three. We are using an actor critic version of the PPO algorithm. For actor and critic role, we use the architecture of the neural network represented in figure number seven. The design of these experiments deals with the credit assignment problem, how to distribute reward among many actions. First of all, we added a external perturbation to the agent. Hopefully speaking, we periodically push the agent, as RoboCup 3D Soccer Simulation League has no support to directly add external forces, we used the ball to push the agent. Firstly, we changed the ball physical properties. The radius of the ball changes from 4 to 10 centimeters, and the ball mass was changed from 26 grams to 1 kilogram. As mentioned before, the reward signal is related to how many time steps the agent was able to survive. If the agent falls, the episode is over. There are two experiments, Joint Position Linear Learning, JPL, and Walking Stabilization Controlling, WSC. Joint Position Learning learns directly the position of each joint. On the other hand, the output of Walking Stabilization Controller policy is summed with the current joint positions computed by the walking gene, as if they represent corrections to the walking pattern. In synthesis, JPL learns directly the pose of the agents to keep it stabilized, while WSC learns the correction to restore the balances. Besides that, for WSC, we engineered the initial position of the agent, as similar as possible to the walking pose. The idea was to make the learned behavior as close as possible to the walking movement. The best evaluation for those tests is the duration of each episode. As an episode ends when the robot falls, the evolution of the average duration of each episode indicates if the policy is achieving the desired behavior. In figures number 8 and 9, it is possible to perceive that the average duration of the episodes increases drastically. Those figures were produced from 12 training sessions repeated in the same conditions. Uh, figure number 8 for JPL and number 9 for WSC. Now let's see videos of the training sessions and the results.
The main goal of this work was to learn a human-inspired behavior for a simulated humanoid robot. We showed that our methodology was capable of learning a push recovery controller using a reward function without any physical constraints in just a few hours. Fortunately, our WSC policy was also deployable to our current walk engine. For future works, we aim to learn the desired behavior while the engine walks, and also investigate how the reward signals used in related works can affect our learning process. We thank our sponsors and members of Eat Androids. Special thanks for Intel for providing the computational support to make it feasible the execution of this project.